And this is our Green Party Women session on how conference works with Louisa Greenbaum, conference manager, and Nicola Watson from the Green Party Women Committee. I'm Mandy and I'm your co-host. Um, if you have particular questions, please put them in the chat, but there will be, um, there's not a lot of us, and I think there will be plenty of chance um, when Louisa and Nicola have spoken for you to put your hands up and ask your questions directly. Um, so you could wait for that rather than putting, typing them out in the chat. So I'll hand over straight away to, uh, I think Nicola's going to talk to us first. I think I thought I'd go first. Yes, we have not over rehearsed this, so it's going to be hopefully reasonably relaxed. I'm going to be bad cop in that I'm going to talk about the sort of nuts and bolts and boring stuff. And hopefully Louisa might be good cop and talk more about, I don't know, the, the fun side. So we... I'm glad everybody's on the same screen because that really makes it helpful. It'd be nice to have 100 people here, but it is nice to be able to see everybody's um, face because if I ask who is familiar with the normal running of a meeting, a, a formal meeting, something with an agenda and minutes and a chair and that sort of stuff. Everybody? Yeah. Or are there people who maybe they go, you know they have a local party where the meetings are like four people in a pub and they don't do this so anyone in that category no right so when i talk about minutes and agenda and matters arising and all those sort of things you know what i mean and conference is exactly the same only it's enormous so everything has to be done to fixed deadlines and times and by the rules so that it, it all works you can't just turn up rock up at the meeting and say oh i've got an item for any other business ain't gonna work it's got to be done and louisa can say it's weeks and weeks in advance of conference these things start who is responsible for organizing conference there we go let's have a bit of participation does anyone want to tell me louisa knows <laughs> okay i'll tell you Standing Orders Committee. The rule of conference is not to use abbreviations, so not to say SOC and not to say SOC and all these things, but they break it all the time. Standing Orders Committee. If you want to have something discussed on the conference floor, you have to send your motion to Standing Orders Committee. But actually, even in advance of that, there are rules. We've got a forum on green spaces for pre-agenda discussion. Where if you've got an idea, you float it, you see if it's got any support, you see if anyone agrees or disagrees. And that's where it starts. If you can find that agenda forum, I think you should get a large packet of biscuits because honestly, they change the name of it every year. Some years it starts autumn conference pre-agenda forum. Sometimes it's SOC pre-agenda forum, you know, well done. And if you find something, that you want my advice in the green party web world bookmark it <laughs> because if you've seen it once you want to go back to it it's the best way to find it so that's what they do soc they take all the motions they make sure that they're in order there are criteria they check out the people who've co-proposed it and they produce the first agenda are people familiar with the notion of the first agenda? Have you seen it on the website? Do you know what it is? Simple nods. Jan's nodding. Jan's an old hand. Yeah. So I'm probably preaching to the converted now. So I'll I'll speed up a bit. When the first agenda is published, you've got a chance to put in amendments. Same rules apply. SOC. Standing Orders Committee does all the business and then they produce the final agenda. And when you rock up at conference, you'll get, oh, I meant to wear my conference lanyard throughout. There we go. So that you can tell I'm official. And I also have a badge. Which, did you see it, Jan? It says conference veteran. <laughs> you get your conference pack. And in it will be the agenda. They have got insane. Look at it. Look how much is in here. Are people aware 
that there are different sections in the <laughs> yay Tina um, different sections in the agenda section a reports that are necessary compulsory and conference starts with that the standing orders committee report and that has to be accepted before conference can happen and if that report isn't accepted for any reason conference can't happen that used to be a complete graveyard slot there'd be half a dozen maybe a dozen complete policy wonks in there and nobody really cared on, on conference you know we voted it through quite i was always there um because i'm a bit sad i'm a bit of a conference um junkie um but it's got it's got to be a bit of a hot ticket now because sometimes standing orders committee rules something out of order and people don't want it out of order so they there they fight the corner to get it back on the agenda so it it has actually got a bit contentious of late i'm not sure Louisa might have a hint of this. I think it will go back to being a graveyard slot because I think standing orders committee are not going to accept those ruling things in and out again in that slot. So we shall we shall wait and see. B motions, big voting papers, whole policy things for the, the manifesto. C motions. They're also policy motions, but smaller. Uh, D motions are organizational. That, that isn't the cut and thrust of climate change and interesting things, but those of us who like the behind the scenes and the nuts and bolts, I like those. I'm interested in the, how many people are on GPEX and all this kind of stuff. And um, emotions, oh, they're another kind of policy motion. I don't know. And it's all spelled out in the front of your agenda. And that, when you look at the timetable, It'll be saying section B or section C, and you'll know where you are in your agenda and where to be. Right, I'm going to step back a bit and let Louisa have a go and hopefully fill some of the gaps in. If you've got questions, you're welcome to stick a hand up and interrupt. I, I like being interrupted, it's helpful. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, thank you, Nicola. Um, yeah, I recognise, I think, almost all the names in the list, which I think means that most people here have been to at least once, if not several conferences. Um, so I probably won't go into stuff that you already know, won't waste your Thursday evening time. Um, but just a couple of things to pick up on what Nicola said. So yeah, space is an agenda forum. I agree. It's absolutely awful. Um, there's nothing we can do about it at the moment. We are we are working towards moving on to something called Greens Discuss, which is something that the Global Greens or the European Greens, I can't remember, they both use it, um, have set up as a kind of a shareware system um, and it's much more user friendly. Um, so that is in progress. Where we are at the moment is the SOC uh, need to trial it to see if it works for our purposes but they're so busy which is why we all need to support the motions that get more members onto soc please um that uh, yeah, a lot of the things that are less than perfect with conference come about because soc are just too busy to input into either new systems or changes but that's just a little little aside there um yeah so soc as nicola said she said they organize conference well they organize the content of the motions as I'm sure you all know, because you're um, regulars. Uh, so I organise all the other stuff. So printing that agenda, um, the venue, all that kind of stuff, but keeping an eye on what SOC are doing and supporting them and being the interface between all the various stakeholders in conference. Um, oh, another, oh, on the Section A motions, because this is one of the most awful parts of conference, um, there is, uh, a plan this time to, as we did last time, to fast track some of the A reports, not the SOC report, but some of the others, to stop that agony of the first plenary going on for hours and hours and hours, and it being Saturday afternoon before we get to anything um, vaguely interesting and policy related. So um, I don't think SOC have announced that on the forum yet, as um, I think they intend to but it'd be great if we could support that and obviously no intention here of blocking democracy we want to discuss things if they need discussing but we don't want 
for particularly for newcomers to conference their first experience to be a plenary that grinds on and on and on with some sometimes not particularly inter interesting reports um yeah so um i think i feel more inclined actually to see if anyone's got any questions because i think you probably know a lot already but have some very specific questions so does anyone have a question yes i have a hand up oh no okay. Sorry, so there's one we... chat from Deborah, but I heard someone say I've got a hand up. Was that you, Tina, saying you've got a hand up? It was, but I, I don't want to jump the queue, but I, I just wasn't sure if you saw it. Uh, right, okay. Should, should I just take Deborah's question on fast tracking? Yeah, go ahead. First. So fast tracking is when something is uncontroversial and straightforward, an SOC can recommend that we don't go through the usual process of debate and right of reply, and which can take a long time, um, and that we just say, look, surely we're all behind this, can we just vote on it now? And then it just gets voted on. Um, and this often works really, really well when those conditions are met, when it is uncontroversial, etc. cetera. Um, I can't honestly think of an example when that's been abused, when something's, someone's attempted to fast track something, possibly has happened. That there isn't is an opportunity at the SOC report to object to fast tracking. That that is the time to object to it. So yeah, if it does objected to it, the SOC report, you can't yeah. do it later. That's yeah. the time. So yeah. I think if I think it takes ten people on the conference floor to say actually we don't support this fast tracking, and then it doesn't go any further. Um, oh, I thought it was too late once it got to conference floor. There you go. Oh, you go. okay. No, I, th I think it's actually in the plenary. I think uh, all this would be answered for you by the standing orders for the conduct of conference, <laughs> which is um, linked to on the conference page on the member's website. And because it changes all the time, I can never quite keep on top of what's in it either, to be honest. Um, but my understanding was that it's 10 members objecting. And I thought that was the conference floor. Something for us all to go away and research, I guess. Um, but yeah, I hope that's answered your question, Deborah. Um, Tina. I have so many questions. I'll try and condense it down to something smaller. My, 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 my concern, having been to a few Green Party conferences now, it took me a really long while to get brave enough to go and vote. It was really weird. You know, I spent maybe the first two or three just going and networking and getting a feel for the place and then going in and voting, that feels really brave. You kind of wish someone would hold your hand in there, you know? Um, but what, what concerns me most is the percentage of people who attend conference in relation to the number of people in the party and how much influence and that has on the whole profile of our party. Like we have 55,000 members, but maybe, mm. you know, it's less than 1% or something will go to conference and mm. the votes come from the people at conference. I can see that it's enhanced by doing hybrid, but I wonder, is it very different in other parties? What's different about our conference and say Labour or Conservative or Lib Dems? And do they have the same issue with a tiny percentage of members seeming to reflect what they want in the party and it not being the other 99% didn't even know it was going on or how to engage or, or willingly engage? Mm. Sorry if that's yeah. a bit messy. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. And it is a bit of an irony that we make a big thing about how democratic our conference is and we're the only party that's so bottom up that the membership can make policy. But I, I actually agree with you that having, I think anyone that's experienced it for a while from the inside would think, hang on, this isn't actually feeling that democratic because like you said, the small number of um, small percentage of the membership that engage and it's, it's between one and 4%, depending on how well attended a conference I, I can't, I can't and, um, be absolutely certain about other parties, but I would say that they would all have some sort of delegate system. So the, the people who go to the conference, yeah, they're there, they're either mandated or, the, you know, and they mm. wear badges and they do all the business. And whereas, so, sorry, just to clarify, anybody can go. So is it, a delegate conference means that if someone goes to the delegate, they're actually representative of many others, like in their local group or a region or whatever. Okay, so each one. Well, yeah, yes and no, although that's also controversial. I mean, there have been a few attempts to move us towards delegate conferences, and I can see advantages in it, but I can also see disadvantages because it would generally mean that um, you as members wouldn't be able to attend conference unless you were chosen as the delegate for your local party. I mean, there are other systems you can use, but that's generally the system. 
and we did have what we call a representative system because we don't like the word delegates when i was doing conferences and other people could always attend as observers but they couldn't mm. vote yeah the delegates had the vote. and there was a system of how many delegates a party got depending on on its membership that was abolished in my time um and in practice, as far as I could see from my seat, it didn't make any difference to who attended. Yeah, that's what I suspect as well. But coming back to why such a small percentage of the membership attend, I don't think it's that surprising. I mean, if you look at the agenda that Nicola held up, it is huge. And you know, to have the time and the will and the desire to engage with that amount of information. Um, it's quite it's quite something but, but it's almost i'm sorry to keep interrupting it's almost discriminatory do you know what i mean unless you're you've got the time energy and like i, I know that yeah. so many of the women i know are carers for either their kids their grandkids mm -hmm. their parents maintaining a job and they would all dearly love to be involved in this mm -hmm. process um, but because digesting that information yeah. is so challenging i think ironically i think the solution is for us to be less democratic so i mean as you've said you know there's a very small number of members who engage with the policy making process and are they representative of all the membership probably not to be honest um in fact definitely not and the only way i can see of getting around that is, is to have a different policy making process so i'm actually i'm not that proud of our kind of members make policy process system I can't believe I just said that, but um, I don't think it's as great as we sometimes think it is. And I think something different, even though it yeah. might draw some gas from people of you know, having a more centralised system of making policy, which then the membership somehow just support without having to engage in such a huge I, amount of detail would be better and less of a burden on the membership and more members would engage, I, which would make it more democratic. Um, people do work very hard on policy and it, mm -hmm. it's gut wrenching when they get it to the first agenda and then mm -hmm. somebody who had no interest for the preceding two years mm -hmm. puts all the amendments in and the number of times I have heard someone stand up at conference and go, well, actually, um, well, I've only I only just looked at this, but I'd like to say and yeah. my inclination to say, yeah. sit down and shut up because I'm yeah. not interested. People have worked for years to put this together. You've yeah. had time. Yeah, do I think you know, maybe this system. was a good system when we were a tiny party, but I yeah. think that there's a, an absolute lack of quality control sometimes. You know, it, the, the threshold for putting a motion forward is very low. And so pretty much everybody can. And they don't necessarily know what they're talking about, which <laughs> is um, not great. And and I find that particularly painful. You're recording organizational this, please, motions. <laughs> it's after seven, so I'm not holding back. But um, sometimes with the organisational motions, that's particularly painful when you see someone put something forward, which um, people who are actually involved in the area that they're proposing to change know that this is an absolute catastrophe. And uh, yeah, every single conference has something in that area and yeah. i appreciate that you know you can you can get institutional blindness so you might be in a position like your staff or whatever and you and you don't realize you need change and maybe it's good that the membership can then you know give you a slap and say we need to do this but quite often it seems to me that the things that are put forward are actually just problematic and not very well thought through um yeah and that is a lot of pages of printing and a lot of hours of membership time that go into discussing <laughs> things that are not necessarily for the good of the party always but other um, other opinions exist <laughs> there's uh two two people with their hands up so uh jan do you want to go first thank you um yes i just pick up a couple of points and then ask a specific question um over the years nikki has trained me to the importance of being there on the friday in the soc um <laughs> report because i did used to be one of those who just thought oh that's 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 sort of boring and and so on um and i think what louisa said absolutely right i mean if there was some somebody coming to conference for the first time i think i would suggest that they looked at one perhaps policy area or one section that they were particularly interested in and, and try and follow that because otherwise it is completely overwhelming it's it's very very difficult and for, there must be other people like me who don't engage um with uh, 
action network or green spaces or whatever it is i find it very off-putting um and i'm still reeling from the fact that our turnout at the elections we've just held was 12.8 uh, percent of the membership. I don't think that gives anybody who was elected any mandate at all. Um, if I was an elected councillor, which I have been, on that sort of mandate, it wouldn't give me any confidence that I was speaking on behalf of my constituents or constituency. And I think, just as, as Louisa and Nicola have said, um, it's very, very difficult with a membership of 55,000 to get a small proportion to come together at the expense in both money and time and, and so on to put those policies forward. So um, I'm just one, you know, I think we do need to look actively at different different ways of working. But my specific point was I was hoping to be there in person but because of um, family um, commitment that's come up now. I'm going to zoom in. Um, could you just explain a little bit about, I'm hoping not to be disenfranchised, I'm not going to be there all the whole time, um, two specific questions, if you could just remind me how we vote, and I'm very keen to go to the Sunday morning Green Party women panel, particularly as you've got two women, hopefully if the second can get the visa, from Uganda mm -hmm. coming in. That, um, and I'm just going to say, I had a video call from somebody in Uganda this afternoon, it was very oh. jolly, and then read that, that was lovely. Um, but so, two specific queries really. You and yeah, so the, and the hy hybrid element, um, so we did that for the first time last autumn, if anyone here joined online and was there in person in Birmingham, and it went surprisingly well. Um, so in terms of plenary, what, what it will mean is that everyone who's joining online will be in a, a Zoom call. Um, but this Zoom call will be, there's a conference platform that we'll be launching soon. Um, and it's unfortunately a different one, I know, which is not ideal because we had a security issue with the platform that we used for Autumn 21. It worked really well in lots of ways. But there was a security breach which we couldn't overlook so we had to look for a different provider um but it has all turned out well because a party member who runs a very big platform provider has contacted us and their platform's even better and we're paying a lot less for it because they're a party member so we'll launch that very soon um but you'll be in a zoom call on the platform yeah. um and but you will be able to interact with the room so everyone that's in the zoom call like we can see everybody now will be visible on a screen uh in the main hall not the big screen because that's where the agenda text yes. will be but on a side screen so not everybody will be visible all the time it will kind of move through the gallery and whoever's if you're called to speak and you're online you, you the speaker will appear on the screen um so we very much hoping that it will work like it did at autumn that it is genuinely two way I mean it's it's sometimes a little bit frustrating I know it's never going to be well I don't want to say it's never going to be perfect but I'm sure if you're at home. There might be things that you feel you're missing out on so we've had some feedback things like people at home in the zoom call didn't want to have a holding slide and music while the room was filling mm. they just wanted silence and a camera on the room, so they could see everyone coming in taking their seats. So we've taken that on board. Um, so we'll try and make it feel like everybody in the Zoom call is in the venue. Obviously, we can't no. make it absolutely like you're there, but we'll do our best. Um, other things that we learned from Autumn 21 are to have three chairs for each session. So to have someone who's just the link with the online people, that worked yeah. really well yeah. Yeah. Uh, in 21. So we'll definitely be doing that again. So that's how it will work in the plenaries um and there we have lots of technical support so we have you know three cameras so that you can see all the different angles and um someone managing the live stream etc etc which this is a good point to say this actually i get emails from people relatively often saying why does it cost the same if i'm joining online because it's free isn't it but it actually costs an awful lot of money mm. to have three camera people 
all the sound, etc. Um, anyway, that's just a little aside there. And, and then also in the break there were a lot, a lot of tech support in all the rooms as well when when um, yeah um, yeah meeting on yeah yeah. So all the breakout rooms we couldn't possibly afford to do it with that level of tech support with professionals that we've brought in. Um, but we do it with a staff team, so a mixture of staff and volunteers. So it costs a lot less. So we've invested in cameras and webcams and laptops, which are set up in each room. And then it's a it's a kind of simpler version of what I've just described to you that you know you're in a Zoom call, the people in the room can see you on a screen, you can see them via a camera. Um, you'll be able to ask questions. Can, can I just ask a question now? So I'm sitting at home and I want to vote, and obviously I something will come oh, up. Yeah, and I, yeah. I will press. Meanwhile, Nick is sitting in the room and she puts her hand up. Is that right? Or you're I not. Imagine, yes, yeah. So we do we do have mixed voting, which yes. because we can't see any other way of doing it. So in an ideal world, you wouldn't have a mixed system. No, You'd have everybody happening. voting electronically so people yeah. at home would vote electronically yeah. and people in the venue would have a little keypad yes. they would vote on but it's incredibly expensive yeah um, so we we have a mixed system and it worked fine for autumn with yeah. a little bit of learning as we went along mm. um there are some challenges so there's a delay for example on the video feed of a few seconds so um it, after the chair says in the room please now vote it's a few seconds before the people at home hear that. Right, yeah. But that wasn't as bad as we thought at autumn. Um, it just means the chairs have to know this and they have to wait to see both votes. And, and we actually adjusted as we went along there to make it simpler so that um, people in the room were voting. And if it was absolutely clear, if it was overwhelmingly for or against, then I don't think they even at some point said, please vote online now because that just seemed like it was going to hold hold things up if it was overwhelming but it had to be overwhelming um the the big challenge with the voting system is that uh what we're all used to in like zoom meetings where you just do a poll you know something pops up mm -hmm. in front of your face in the meeting and you say yes or no doesn't work for our voting because it can't it's not that sophisticated so it can't cope with proxy votes and all that kind of stuff um, mm -hmm. which is a real frustration because that's so easy and we often get people saying voting in the workshops like pre-conference is so easy why can't we have it like yes. that in plenaries mm -hmm. but that's because in the workshops it's just straw polls and they're not binding so we can get away with using that simple polling feature but in the plenaries we can't so anyone who's been at conference online or even if they've been there in person will probably know election buddy so election buddy is the only software only provider we found that can cope with our proxy system. Um, so it's possible we'll be using them again. But as I mentioned, this platform, which is called Crowdcoms, which is owned by a member, um, are developing a voting system for us. When I said that was our biggest challenge, they said, we, we accept your challenge. And they've gone <laughs> away to create a polling system that will cope with our proxies. So I'm yet to have mm -hmm. the final confirmation that they've managed it. But they've said they're 99% sure that this time we will have something in the plenaries where it will just pop up in front of your face. So you won't have to navigate to a different window mm -hmm. to election yeah, body, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. I hope. I can't promise you that yet. But, <laughs> and I haven't said it to anyone else yet because I thought if I say it, then people will be upset when it doesn't happen. But I've said it now. So, <laughs> can, um, can Carrie Ann ask a question? Yes. She's sat very yes. patiently with her. Been yes. yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Carrie. Hi, thanks. Um, just in the headphones. I'm new to the Green Party, uh, having been kicked out of the Labour Party, but I did go to several conferences as delegate to the Labour Party and uh, women's conferences as well. Women's conferences were online um, and there were various technical issues and some controversy about who was allowed to speak. Um, it just out sort of give a bit bit more about the, the delegate because I, I was confused at the beginning of this meeting because I didn't realize that there weren't delegates. Um, so I didn't realize everybody who went had that vote. Um, and like people have said, it's it is a mixed bag. I mean, when when we've um, when I first became a delegate in 2017, there wasn't much input. You were just sent, which uh, I complained about and I wanted more input 
to feel like I was representing the constituency. So, um, and it, it was an uphill struggle actually as a delegate to get input from the local members, even though at that time we had actually a lot of members, Labour Party members. Uh, I don't know how many Green Party members we have around here. I'm in the furnace, which sort of semi-rural. Um, so I, I say I'm, I'm sort of learning on the hoof a little bit, mm. picking things up, and I, I think when I get to conference, it will probably be a, a steep learning curve. I love the fact that it's hybrid. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the reason I'm going to conference is because it's Harrogate and I'm in South Cumbria. So I thought, well, why, I, I don't know if it's any ever anywhere else, but I thought, well, that, you know, that's a lot closer than Brighton. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that, looking forward to the, the interaction with other people. I think that's you get that to a certain extent online, but only if you really are already in a, a group. So I think, you know, if people can, can go there, then, then that, that's the plus of being there. Um, I can see this party growing. And if it does, I think it, it is something that needs to be on the agenda to consider delegates because of um, the, for, for people that go to conference either online or in person it is a cost there is a cost factor mm. that, that stops a lot of people attending um that would like their voices heard so if if members that can't make it to conference do have uh, have that input mm. and i think that's something worth developing and i think that applies especially to women because of the care responsibilities that we have we tend to you know have have more sort of things Mm. It stop us yeah. doing things like this. Um, I was I was initially put my hand up just to ask about the the voting, and I think I think that's mostly been covered. The only thing I, I believe I, there are other sessions going on, aren't there, as well as what's on the conference so, board? Yeah. Right? Okay, so can I answer, how do you know when to can, vote for something? Can I answer the? proxy voting and can I also address I've, I've seen your hand Lucy but if I can answer a couple of two questions in one really sort of answering Tina as well if you're new to conference there's no obligation to, to vote there's no ob I mean I actually because I'm not up to speed anymore really I, I spend my time in Green Party women or seniors I'm not up to speed on all the policy stuff so I go to plenaries because I find them interesting but I don't vote nine times out of ten because I'm I'm not aware of all the issues. But a good a, something we have that I think is excellent is workshops where all the motions will come to a workshop. And a workshop is a room with a usually if they can manage it, a circle of chairs in it where the amendments, if any, and the motion are discussed informally. <laughs> no, no rules of debate. And it's much more relaxed and it's if you're learning it's a great forum because you can say but i don't understand this what's that who's written it you know you can just ask dummy questions and it'll all be fine you can also get used to personalities and who's who you've seen someone in the circle and then you see them chairing and you you know you just get used to how it all works really recommend workshops voting i didn't have i don't know if louise has got one i didn't have any voting slips i looked through all my old files and i couldn't find them but in your pack you'll get three voting slips they're about this size and this this has been in a in a badge uh, one for each day when a vote is called in the hall you put your hand up for or against or and we don't do abstains but for or against and if it's overwhelming that's that's the result like louisa said overwhelmingly passed overwhelmingly failed if it's close there will be a count so you hold it up for a long time um, various standing orders committee well, count them properly and also we the hybrid makes it slightly more complicated but the principle is the same if it's really really close someone will say card vote and if you get 10 members voting for a card vote right it all has to be counted in boxes this is when i again i don't have one but the, you'll get in your pack a sort of strip like this and it'll have A, B, C, D. There'll be four of them, four card votes. Um, 
and what you do is you mark four or against the same people come around with a box they literally go in the box and they count them this is when the proxies come in proxies aren't used willy-nilly all the time if someone's given you a proxy from your local party because they can't come this is the time when you are you'll get two strips one for you one for your proxy and you can use both of those votes in the card vote so that's when the proxies come in that's what they're for so yeah to add louisa um well just covering proxies so again it's one of those things where i feel it's a little bit outdated and we possibly almost don't need them anymore because it was for you know pre-hybrid uh, where if you couldn't come for whatever reason um you could give your vote to someone else um doesn't seem like the greatest system to me because you haven't listened to the debate and you, you can choose to either tell your proxy holder vote how you like i trust you or you can give them a list and say i want you to vote yes on this one no on this one i'll abstain on this one um but now that we have hybrid it feels like the circumstances in which someone couldn't be there they will still be there you might be in hospital um mm. but it's few and far between and it causes us massive headaches and costs us a lot of money. So, you know, we could use a much simpler voting system if we didn't have proxies. Um, things would go faster and we'd get through more motions if we didn't have proxies. Uh, we've had a couple of instances of abuse of the proxy system and there's investigation going on at the moment about fraud. Um, and, you know, I can't swear to it, but I'm pretty sure even if it's not fraud, there's often just kind of slightly not in the spirit of it use of the system quite often so proxies are a bit of a pain to be honest um that's my my verdict on proxies um proxies online yeah you can do proxies online yep yeah. um so other things so who's allowed to speak we have a speaker slip system um I think it works pretty well. People are annoyed if they don't get called to speak, but it's generally just because there isn't enough time. You know, the, the chairs are good, generally, uh, and well-trained, and they will see who's indicated that they want to speak, um, and they will look and balance all kinds of considerations, uh, diversity of speakers, uh, whether it's for or against how much time we've got left that kind of thing so to be, that part i think works really well if if you hear people moaning that they didn't call, get called to speak i think it's generally sour grapes i think the system is is quite fair i think the not worst, always yeah the worst thing is the same person jumping up to speak over and over yeah. again yeah and, and yeah you, know, I, you can see why because they've taken a lot of interest but it's yeah not, not good for, for no sorry so, lucy's had a hand up punch you for ages sorry did i did we stop you image uh no there was a question about other sessions uh and i was going to say something about workshops but i, I think let's say what lucy wants to ask first and we can always i, I really don't mind if it's in the flow just carry on I, does it, yeah okay i'll just it won't take long on those i was just gonna say yeah. on the workshops because yeah nicola was saying a circle of chairs we don't do them at conference anymore we do them uh pre-conference all online which works really well for workshops um because it means everyone can join it's a bit less rushed it's not in competition with anything else that's happening so that system for doing workshops separately in the week before conference i think has worked really well we still have workshops for b and f motions at conference some obscure reason why they have to be at conference and not before don't ask me um but that's only a small number so mostly it happens before um other sessions yet yeah, there's a whole other program of stuff going on uh, I won't go into too much detail about that now, but it's all in the timetable. Um, yeah, Lucy, what was your question? Hi, so I've been, uh, I've attended online three conferences and uh, what I've noticed is that there's always like a panic when the first votes come in because some people can't vote. And then there's this sort of vacuum where they go, what the hell do I, do? excuse my language, what the hell do they, mm, God, uh, what do I do? Because that's like, um, just yeah, wh where do I go? And I just wonder if there's going to be like a like a hot desk or something where someone can like someone's a contact. You can yeah, people. yeah, that there always is. Um, we're going to try and have maybe some more people available to give support this time. It's a really, really difficult one. Um, 
I don't want to say, oh, it's never our fault, it's always the user fault, but I think often it is. Um, what the problem is, is that someone finds the technology really, really challenging, which I can understand, but it's difficult to know how we could set up a hybrid conference that was secure and efficient um, and so easy that absolutely everybody, even if they were on an ancient Nokia mobile phone, could vote. And there is a kind of grey area in the middle where we have to keep everything running at a certain level and it's not going to work if someone's on a really ancient PC. And um, I'm afraid that just is a bit of a fact that it is really difficult. Yeah. I'm not quite sure how we deal with it. Other, and we do have support there. And there are some people that we've never managed, despite kind of intense support all through conference on the phone, never managed to get them voting. And I'm pretty sure if I went around and sat down with them and had a cup of tea and looked at their ancient iPad, <laughs> we would get them voting. Yeah, um, there, but have, it's there quite have been tech issues because uh, you know I've done these things a good few times. I, I remember sending some cross emails to you one time. I was like, I'm doing it. I've done that. No, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got I think just the end, really clear is... signposting mm -hmm. would help. Really clear signposting, like verbally at the beginning of a meeting, and mm. like with every because it's it's not clear like who like you can just call this number. I think Rachel Collinson. Uh, stepped in the spring conference she said just yeah. text me and that seemed to help a lot because everyone had one contact that was clearly said yeah and um, yeah unfortunately she won't be able to do it again because she nearly had a nervous breakdown because she yeah, didn't know like, yeah. yeah no i was aware that she so, stepped in as an emergency and i yeah, just thought it's i, just and need to I, I think it's, it's it's very kind of her that she did um I'm Maybe not sure, it's, if I'm it. really honest, I don't think it's realistic to offer that level of individual one-on-one -on -one support to people because she was almost doing one-on-one -on -one support um, kind of people texting her how they wanted to vote, etc. Yeah, maybe um, we could test it in a couple of earlier sessions. Though. Yeah, we do Happy. always do that. There was a kind yeah. of check your tech thing before every plenary where you could log on and do a test vote, mm. um, but not everyone can make it. So uh, I know this sounds like I'm saying, but we did everything. But and we will always try and look for more things we could do. Um, but that is a very that is one of the trickiest bits, I think, kind of helping people along uh, when you're not actually in the room with them and their technology might not be up to it or they're feeling panicky. It, it's quite tricky. Um, I've put my hand up to ask a couple of questions. Is that all right? If nobody else is waiting. Um, one is, um, I'm, I'm presuming, because although I've been at conference doing bookstores in the past, I've never attended as a member. Um, I've only attended online um, the last few conferences. So I'm presuming in all, when you're attending in person, you have to be in the plenary room in order to vote you can't do it online yeah exactly yeah um because otherwise so, it be... yeah we have thought about could we have that kind of mixed voting going on but it would be very difficult to keep it secure yeah. i could see that it might be good if you were at conference but tired and then thought i'll go back to my hotel room so i'll vote in person in the morning and then go back and vote online in the afternoon but um it would be very difficult for us to say that that was secure because if you had a voting card in the morning we wouldn't know you'd left the building we'd have to get it off you so we haven't found a way of doing that so we do allow people to um do it in chunks of the day so you can say i want to vote online on friday at the venue on saturday we can cope with that but we can't split a day into some online and some at the we, venue we, we we're good you know we're greens we still got that old hippie attitude i think to a lot of things and I know when I, I used to be in the venues and talk to venue staff, I can remember Scarborough, these guys saying to me, you just wander in and out. I said, they don't do that at Labour. They're in. They shut the doors. They are in the whole session. Then they open the doors. They can leave. And we just go, oh, I think I fancy a cup of coffee. And you go out and you come back. Oh, is there a vote? Oh, but, you know, we're, we're kind of mm, outliers, really, that way. Are you for yourself? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't bit, do it. Uh, not a little bit maybe. anarchic, isn't it, when you get there? Um, well, you should looking... see what I've seen <laughs> behind the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> well, can I ask one other thing, which is um, for the printed agenda? 
uh, or the printed pack. Is it possible because it's going to it's going to be so thick? And um, is it possible to get that sent to us in advance if we pay something? Yes, yes. that's a good question. Yes. <laughs> it's a very good question. Um, so the system we've had for the past few conferences has been a member who runs a very small printing press has done it for us. And it's worked because, A, bless him, he stays up all night printing it, because the date at which he gets it from us um, is quite late in the day. Not our fault, it's because that's how the agenda deadlines work. So. You know, by the time we've actually got a final agenda that's been signed off by SOC that we can send him artwork, it's quite close to conference already. Um, so he stays up and prints over the weekend and all night and then posts it out on demand to people. He's not going to be able to do that this year. Um, for, I know a, a combination of illness and a break. Um, so I'm trying to get quotes from other printers that might do it, but because they're not prepared to stay up all night and they're not a party member, the quotes are coming in very high. So um, at the moment, it looks like it's going to cost about £10 to get an agenda printed and posted to you. And you'll probably only receive it the day before conference starts. Yeah, this, this, I have to say, and I'm not, I'm not pointing the finger at you, it's life, it's how things are. But when I lived in Sheffield, I hadn't been a member very long. We used to get the agenda in really good time. We could actually discuss it at a local party. Yeah, well, they changed the agenda deadlines about five years ago. I know, and, and it's, it's, it's useless. It's awful. It really yeah, is. Yeah, and it, was, it, it, it helped in some ways because it gave people more time to put motions in. So you could put. Oh, we don't want that. We want less time to put. conference. In. Yeah, but some you people did. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I don't make these decisions. Some people did want that. So they were all like, yay, this is better. Um, but no, no one asked me, and the print it it makes printing the agenda absolutely yeah. impossible. Um, and I can completely see, Mandy. You know, you're not alone. People want to sit down and read that with a cup of tea because on it's bad enough reading it physically, but on screen it's even worse. But it's it's almost impossible to get a printed version to people before conference. We usually end up printing it with some mistakes in it because it hasn't been proofread properly yet to try and get it to people before conference so i'm afraid that's the answer to that it's not not very positive is it i'm sorry i know john's got her hand up now but just following on from that when do when can we actually um go to registration is it only first thing on friday or if we arrive in harrogate on thursday evening or thursday can we pop in and get an agenda yes. um <laughs> we can spend all night reading it <laughs> yeah we yeah that's a good idea we can think of some system so what we couldn't do is have everybody coming on thursday and registering because we wouldn't have all the packs ready yet we're still filling them on thursday but um yeah our, we will think of some system where we can get check who hasn't had an agenda yet already because they're so expensive we always have to check that people aren't picking up three or four copies i know that sounds really uptight but yeah it's all party money and all paper it will be available online um, so yeah, we'll have a chance to see it and then yeah. get, yeah, but it was frustrating, yeah. But you can't mm. write notes and mark things and mm. colour coordinate, it, things like that. I know, <laughs> yeah. I know, but, but you know, like post-its and folding the pages yeah. down. I can't work without paper, sorry folks. I'm just working back through the questions and um, carry on saying accessibility. Yeah, it arguably is, yeah, um, but I, I can't change this, so this would have to be um, an SOC change. Um, um, sorry what was that question i've, I've picked up a couple but so this was uh, like not getting the agenda in advance is that an accessibility issue by all means um, raise it with soc as that uh, that that would be a good way to go yeah or um, you know some other way that, i think that's a fair point yeah to raise so deborah said there's a clash of timetabling uh for the green party mm -hmm. women and disability groups um so we have a self booking system for the um membership groups so that people can see when the other groups are and try and avoid these clashes so you'll have to take that up with yourselves <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's not easy I, i'll just say about timetabling what when i did my first timetable i was really proud of it i got everything in i was like that's good you know i fitted every session in and soc said to me you can't do that i said what's wrong with it and they said oh you've put you've clashed business and pleasure there's the business sessions are the plenaries the voting um, and the workshops and we shouldn't be anywhere else while they're on there, there shouldn't be 
fun stuff going on because because you've gone to be at conference you should be there and the pleasure is the other stuff is the group meetings and the fringes and, and all the other things and that's what makes timetabling such a nightmare because you can't spread the group meetings all all over the space because there's a plenary on and you can't have you know a green party mm -hmm. women or seniors or whatever when there's a plenary on so there will be clashes yeah it's running from one place to another is how conference i mean we can always look at me you know we want to avoid clashes as much as possible yeah. um i think it's probably a little bit too late to address that one now so we do send the I mean, timetable out to everyone who's got a slot and say yeah the group is your chance to try and to avoid the clashes to the best of their and it might not be the clash that suits you you know it might be suit, suit the people who've booked the meetings mm. yeah and the, yeah yeah so the, yeah like i said they're self-booking and then the problem is if you move someone somewhere else that will create new clashes and then so it's it becomes very it's like playing a really horrible nightmare game of tetris <laughs> but anyway um someone asked so mandy you asked what are f motions and e motions so e motions are accredited policy motions so this was introduced at the same time about five years ago as the deadlines were changed a system of getting your policy motion accredited which is good so that's, it means that I'm you. Go, I'm to... going to overrule you. I'm a uh, point of order. Oh, is that wrong? No, that's C. Well, all right. It was um, last year. <laughs> it could have changed. C is thought... accredited, and E just says policy motions. Oh, so the other way around. Right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. C is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're right. You're right. You're right. Accredited is good. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Okay. And E is right, one so, that didn't make so that. So E happen. is the unaccredited policy motions. Where they haven't gone through the process of uh, consulting with people and that kind of thing, and putting which is good. It's like a little kite mark, isn't it? It says, "Look, yeah, yeah, done yeah. Work. yeah." Which is good. Uh, now, F motions. You might have to help me here again. I can't remember. Oh, F motions, voting papers or draft voting papers? No, B is draft voting papers. So F I is no voting papers. I've... Okay. What are okay. they? There is. There aren't any Fs. Oh, hang on. Oh, hang on. It is. It's a draft voting paper. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so there no vote is taken on them then. That with the draft. And a voting paper. paper is like when a big chunk of policy needs updating or changing yes. radically. They're, they're massive. When you see a you know B come up, that's gonna be that's gonna be a day in a plenary, you know. <laughs> but they're the good ones in my opinion. Well they're the um, important they are the important ones, yeah. yeah. They're the ones that have had all the work and yeah, they and you and you learn a lot when you listen to them as well. A couple okay. of other things to look up, uh, senior hand, Jan. Um, right. Late motions, which may well not stand the test of time, they're ones that didn't meet the official deadline, but for some reason, Standing Orders Committee um, decides that it's acceptable to have missed the deadline because it's an important motion. I think if you can't meet the deadline, it's too bad. <laughs> Louisa and I were quite hardcore, aren't we? Really? No, we didn't make it. And the other thing is emergency motions. Um, I, I I find I would mm. I would ban these. I think they're a total waste of time. They're just virtue signaling, basically. But there's there's something like you know, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> kittens are marvelous. The Green Party loves kittens. You know, all those in favour. But they are written up on on a piece of paper, stuck on a board. Um, you sign your name on it. The one that gets the most signatures will be heard. And mm -hmm. um, conference has to suspend standing orders. We have to sort of step outside regular conference. And take this emergency motion that uh, we prefer it when the sun is blue to when it's cloudy and then everybody votes and they all go and have coffee but that that's what an emergency motion is and um yeah they're they're a bag of mice really but. i suppose in defense of emergency motions even though i agree with you they often just feel like <laughs> us showing off about how nice we are um that the comms team really like them yes. because it gives them something Hmm. Yeah, the, the organisational motions are often really dull. You know, the press aren't going to pick up on the fact that we're putting some more people on SOC, Standing Orders Committee, hmm. but they will pick up pick up on the fact that we would, you know, slash everyone's energy bills or that kind of thing. So that's the kind of thing that an emergency motion would be. So it, it's great. It can be a bit dull for the people at conference and think, why are we doing this? But it's very good for press releases and comms relations, which is not a bad thing. Uh, we've just got a couple of minutes left, so should we just take Jan? Well, it, mine was very brief, just a comment really about the paper agenda. I was just wondering, looking at us all on screen and hopefully not upsetting anybody, we are of a certain vintage. And I just wondered 
whether that was uh, we are more comfortable with something on paper i would love to have an agenda in advance do our younger members are they quite happy scrolling through all those pages of absolutely there's really? almost a hundred percent correlation between age right. okay. and whether people want a paper agenda yeah. or not and i'd say the cutoff point is probably around 30 35 Ooh. anyone under 35 yeah if you ask them if they want a paper copy they look at you like you're bonkers and um i'm yeah. i'm waiting for some hard evidence on this because <laughs> i hear i i hear writers speak about um, the difference between tapping keys and using a pen and the relationship. Mm. I, I firmly believe there's some different relationship with the reading matter in my hand in a piece of paper. But I um, think we might have heard the same thing on the radio yesterday, Nicola. But when he said it, I thought, but you are of advanced years. And would someone younger feel the same? Be, but maybe no, not you. But he was the man on the radio that was saying it. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, it's possible. Yeah, it's yeah. possible. But you can't proofread on a screen, not effectively. You know, there are jobs that are. It's harder on a screen. Mm, and I agree. was, I was using a screen. You know, in the eighties, I've, I've been doing it a long time. So you know, I, mm. I found it hard then when I was young. No, so no, there is definitely a very strong link between who can. Who, who wants what type of agenda, definitely. Yeah, they might be used to it. Um, they might, yeah, yeah but yeah. That, I, that doesn't make it better. <laughs> okay, shall we wind up there then? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks very much, Louisa and Nicola. Uh, thank um, you everybody for mm -hmm. coming on your Thursday night and <laughs> see you Just either in Harrogate or online. Right. And don't, um, don't forget, we do have another event next week. Yes, I was going to just speaking. say that. So now you know about plenaries and workshops, you can come along and home your speaking. I'm not, uh, Sarah Bingham is going to do their public speaking training. Oh. So just, that's next Thursday, the 15th at 7pm. The Zoom link is on Green Party Women's Green Spaces. And mm. I do, uh, you know, I'm really sorry that we've ended up clashing our AGM with the disability group. Um, I don't know how that's come about or, you know, I apologise that we, we didn't suss that out. Um, there's another clash, our, our fantastic fringe event, Global mm. um, Women for a Greener Future, yeah. unfortunately clashes with the leaders Q&A, which I know will be very oh. popular. But, um, but, you know, not to malign our, our leaders, but to be honest, I think that's more for the Good press, morning. isn't it? Um, so our our event, our fringe event, is going to be fantastic. We, it includes um, two local, two UK-based um, councillors and the visiting Ugandan women from the Ecological Party of Uganda. So do come to that if you can if you can dare not to listen to the leaders. Could, could I be very cheeky? Where would this recording be found if I've got any local? members who would like to look at it where does you, it's being recorded well how where is it then we've got a, a green party women channel somewhere but i don't know where it is but oh. you will it's or... on it's on youtube and i think there are two because there was one from a previous year's committee but we haven't got the login details to that so we had to set up a new one this year it's currently got two videos on one of our abortion event and one of something else so is it Green Party Women? I think it's GW Committee. I can't quite remember. But if you is look on... up Green Party Women on YouTube, both of yeah. these channels come up. But we will Thank put it on Spaces, won't we? We'll use Spaces to, to put things like that. So if, yeah, if we do. Put... Okay. Thank you very much. Great. Louisa. Just want to say one more really quick thing, because a couple of people have mentioned um, caring responsibilities and women being excluded from conference. Crash bookings close tomorrow. And so far, we've only got one booking. So if you do know anyone who is planning to book their kids into the crash, please give them a nudge. I mean, an email did go out to everyone registered for conference today, reminding them. But um, yeah. We could put that give on our social nudge. media tonight, maybe. That'd be great. Thank you. Thanks very much, Louisa. Thanks, Nicola. Sorry, Jan, did you want a quick? No, you just say thank you. Great. Um, appreciate you all coming and uh, we'll see you next Thursday, hopefully. Oh, and Monday for our committee meeting, seven o'clock next Monday. Okay, bye, bye everyone. then everyone. Bye.